Welcome back to Wizard Supercoach. This will be the last video for the points given up by position stuff uh, with the fixture. Uh, so today I'll be covering three categories to get it all done and then hopefully my next video after this will be my first draft of a team for the year. Finally got that sorted after not being able to choose a midfield but you know still a couple of months to go so it doesn't really matter. The first graph here is points given up to wings and attacking defenders so if you haven't watched the other videos just quickly how this works is that you basically want to be facing the teams in green as they give up uh, more points uh, to these positions and the dark green are the best and you want to avoid basically the red teams so someone like Dacos before I get into who's got a half decent run here you notice that Dacos has two of the red teams pretty early on and he ends up playing the red teams five times so it's not exactly ideal but if you are thinking that's a hard run to begin with and you might fade him because of that think again because last year Dacos averaged 129.6 including finals and that was against only those three teams so it really doesn't seem to bother him um I'm still not sure if I'm going to start him or not, but uh, yeah, don't let this put you off him. So the first one you'll see that does have a decent run is Geelong. Their first five games of the year are quite good, and then their run home after the bye at the end, they don't have any red teams, So, and they play all three of the easiest teams. The only problem here is that I can't think of any... Uh, any fantasy relevant wings or attacking defenders for Geelong apart from like obviously Tom Stewart but I don't really have him in this category um I'll get to him later but yeah if you can if you can think of any relevant Geelong players that play that role tell me in the comments um I'm hoping that there are some but I just I don't think there is next up's GWS they've got a really good start to the season here pity about the buy the extra buy but um, I think really Whitfield some people looking at starting him he finished last year like a house on fire post by he's one that I'm considering I guess but there's a, it's just hard because of structure and he's that awkward kind of price around the 500k and uh, yeah it, it would basically come down to do you want him or Hayden Young I don't think you have both and Young right now is just looking the better pick. I think Whitfield just burnt so many people before, including me. I'm not right now. I'm not not willing to take that risk again. Um, but yeah, again, there could be others. Whitfield just the one that springs to mind for me in that role. Hawthorne, they've also got a pretty good opening run. First nine rounds. Um, Amon seems to be a pretty popular pick. And he, I think he was in my team as well up until a few days ago. So, yeah, that that adds some merit to starting him, I guess. Um, he's quite cheap, and it just depends if he's going to actually play that half-back role. If he's going to sit on the wing like he did in the, um, the match sim this week, then I don't think that he's really worth picking. North Melbourne post by they've got a really good run so maybe keep your eye on Sheasel. i know it's really hard to um plan that far ahead um yeah it's probably probably not even too relevant the run home at this point a lot of things can change i don't even know if you know come halfway through next year Sheasel might not even be anywhere near primo status so um yeah it's it's just what i noticed anyway so yeah if he's doing well at that point you'll be able to see that he has got a good run home. Although I will say that this is only for the last 10 games of last year. Like the data is only taken from the last 10 games. So it's quite possible that next year you might see a completely different set of teams in the red or whatever um, in the, the back half of the year. Teams identify their weaknesses and things change real quick in the AFL. Um, the power, another one with a really good, starting run they've only got one red team there and they play all three of the easiest so i'm guessing like houston he's the obvious one and then tom clury apparently is going to be moved to the wing this year i can actually see him ending up 
getting games down back anyway because I'm not 100% convinced on Zerk Thatcher or Radicalia. So, especially if one of those goes down, he'd have to be definitely worth a look, I think. I'm not sure if he's going to do too well on the wing. He just doesn't seem like the kind of player that would, but stranger things have happened. If you remember Richo about 15 years ago, he nearly won the Brownlow off the wing. So, yeah, definitely keep an eye on Cleary. Uh, St Kilda, they've got a good run to start. So you'd think Sinclair and Wangani Malira, they would be the two obvious ones. Uh, I think Sinclair is probably one of the more unpopular picks uh, compared to the other top defenders. I think there's a group of them that's pretty clear of the rest. So in my mind, it's uh, Sicily, Dacos, Stewart and Sinclair are the four in their own group. But yeah, Sinclair seems to be the one that gets left out a bit for the other three so if you're looking for a pod I think he's pretty good and yeah with that start he'd definitely be an interesting one especially if he's playing half back and not in the midfield uh, Sydney another one they've got the round zero they've got the hard one and then from there it really opens up again they've got the extra buy so that sucks but um, I guess James Jordan he'd be one I expect he'll probably play on the wing. He's a pretty popular pick too, so he'll benefit from that, I think. And then Blakey and Lloyd as well, though I don't think many people would pick them. Lloyd was super coach royalty, but the way Sydney play these days, um, the whole thing has changed. And yeah, he's just, he's not quite there anymore. Blakey, he's too up and down, so I wouldn't really pick either of them. But yeah, Jordan's currently in my team. Because if you remember his first season with Melbourne, um, he just slotted straight in. I think he averaged like low 70s or something. If he does that again, well, he'll make you enough money to be worth a trade. So I'll move on to general defenders now. Now you might notice that this one's a little bit different. You can see the little G, S's and B's. Now the reason for this, look at GWS and Sydney. Like this, there's no other numbers like this on the other graphs at all. So when Sydney last year played, in the last 10 games, general defenders against Sydney were, on average, pretty much 30 points below their average and 20 below against GWS. So that's crazy. You don't want to be playing those teams. So that's why I gave them the numbers here so you can see where, you know, that's really bad for the run. Carlton doesn't matter so much. Um, obviously, you still don't want to play them, but not as much as these two. They're just, they're insane. And then... On the flip side, the Bulldogs, look how many points they give up. Um, that's nearly 30 points on average to general defenders again. So you do really want to be playing the Bulldogs if they're going to continue that, that style. So if we have a look, um, Collingwood's got a disaster. They've got two of the hardest straight up. But as I said, don't worry about Dacos. I don't think there's any Collingwood general defenders that are really relevant anyway. Um... Essendon, they start with a fairly decent run. They've got Sydney, which sucks, but yeah, other than that, it's pretty good. Um, maybe Zach Reed, maybe Ridley for those looking at picking him. For the record, I think Ridley's a trap. I don't think anything will change with his role. Um, just because Mackay's there doesn't mean anything. Um, he'll just take Zerk Thatcher's spot, I think, and yeah, we'll just get the same old up and down scoring from Ridley. He'll just be used as needed. They've also got a good run post by. Again, they've got the um, the Swans in there. So that's not real good. But, you know, again, the run home's not as relevant at this time of year. It's pretty hard to plan that far ahead. Geelong, again, they've got the good start. They play in the first four rounds. They've got all three of the easiest teams. Um, the only problem with them is that, again, I don't really can't really see any options any general defenders at Geelong that I'd be looking at picking um I don't think Stuart fits into general defender he'll come later but yeah again if you can think of anyone tell me in the comments Hawthorne here they've got a really good starting run all the way up to just before the bye um 
that should help Sicily. I think I'm going to start Sicily. Or he's he's in my team at this stage, so that could change. But yeah, that I think it really helps him. I don't think there's many others. Uh, maybe Weddle, but I, I think he's going to play on the wing. I wouldn't be picking him anyway, but I've seen a few discussing him. And then, yeah, the aim on one, he's more of the attacking defender that I discussed in the previous graph. And, uh, I, yeah, it looks like he might spend more time on the wing now anyway, but keep an eye on that one with Hawthorne. I also think that Hawthorne are going to improve a lot this year, and unfortunately, it appears that Sicily, he plays better when they're losing, so... That could be an interesting one. I think picking him might come down to whether you think or how much you think Hawthorne are going to improve this year. So Melbourne, they've got an easy run too to begin with. They start with the Swans, but that doesn't actually factor into the scoring. It's only going to affect price changes, I guess. But um, Marty Hoare, he's going to be a popular pick, I think, especially if he's named in round one. It's going to benefit him. He was a really good scorer too, like Jordan in his first year. He averaged, I think, in the 70s, something like that. Particularly his first few games were were quite high. So, yeah, if he's named round one, I'm picking him. But uh, I think it's Howes for... I think that's his name, Howes for Melbourne. Um, apparently, he's been playing the third tool role in the, the match sims, so in Melbourne's first team. So that's a bit of a worry, but yeah, hopefully Hawk can edge him out and get that spot. Either way, though, I guess there's nothing wrong with picking Howes because I think that they're the same price, so that's all right. But yeah, one of them, I guess, whoever plays is going to get the easiest start. And then lastly, there's Richmond. So they've got this weird run in between the buys here. It's really good. Um, I guess after the first buy, if for some reason you were looking at a Richmond player to upgrade, I can't think of any general defenders really. Maybe Vlosten, but he's I think he's past his best. Hopefully though, if you have got Gibkiss and you know he hasn't made enough maybe in this first run to upgrade him or you've had to do other things, hopefully he can make a bunch of cash through here and then trade him at his buy going into round 15 but yeah again that's pretty far ahead we're two months from the season starting it's very hard to plan that far ahead so the last one and i'll be glad when these are over because they're a bastard to try and make i've got to admit um so this one is for the designated kickers in the team so these are the guys that either take the majority of the kickouts or the team looks to exit defense through these players. So there is some interesting ones here. Um, Adelaide's got a really, really good run here from round one to 10. So I've seen a few considering it, but if you're looking at picking Mitch Hinge as a starter, um, yeah, that, that adds some weight to it. I think he finished quite well last year. Uh, post buy and he's for what he averaged in that time he's actually he's priced pretty cheaply so i think there's a bit of value there just depends if you want to uh if you want to take that risk because as a crom supporter i'll tell you they do tend to use him as a bit of a mr fix it um i think he got even a few cbas they threw him on the wing he goes to half back he'll play deep defense he's real versatile so he just he kind of goes wherever also, Brody Smith, uh, he takes quite a few kick-ins and they'll look to exit through him too because he's an amazing kick. So, yeah, I wouldn't... I wouldn't say don't pick Hinge because I, I don't really like to give advice like that, but um, I don't think I'll be picking him. Uh, Brisbane, good start here. Again, I'm fortunate about that extra buy. Uh, McKenna, he takes the majority of the kick-ins, but so does Coleman. Now, Coleman's... I think he's a pretty popular pick, or at least he was when the um, when the picker first opened. I think there's probably less on him now, but if you're looking to go down that road, uh, yeah, maybe he could he could jump out the blocks and I don't know. Maybe if you start a Coleman and hope that Dacos fails a little bit and then swap them over when they get close in price, something like that. I have seen people 
wanting to do crazy things like that because of uh, the extra four trades. But let me say this. Those four trades won't last very long. People are acting like there's an extra ten or something. It's only four. That's two weeks max. So by the time you blast through your um, boosts and stuff, which I think we're going to have, you're not even going to notice having the extra four. Trust me. Injury set in. It all looks roses now, but it's it's bloody late January. So yeah, I don't want to I don't want to quote Abs Magic, but just calm it down. Geelong again, really good starting run. And again, post buy, really good starting run. It seems that some teams, obviously, they just don't put much effort into trying to stop the other team's defence. But uh, yeah, here's where Tom Stewart should shine. I think I'm going to start him, provided that he's not put in the midfield. So keep an eye on that one. Um, yeah, I'm going to back him in. I think he'll do really well across this stretch. I, I hope that he can average like 120, something like that. Um, but yeah, realistically... You know, as long as he outperforms his price or thereabouts, I'm happy. So, it is good though, if you, obviously if you're picking Stewart, you think he's a keeper. So, apart from this uh, bullshit in the middle here, he's got a pretty easy year. Uh, GWS, so, another good starting run here. And again, unfortunate about the extra buy, but yeah, takes them up to their second buy. So Whitfield and Himmelberg are the ones that they look to come out of defence through. More so Whitfield once they once they uh, started playing well. I think that was why they started playing well partly is that they started to attack more. Himmelberg seems to be a bit like that. Uh, you know, the Fremantle defenders that they kind of get the chips and all that um, in the, in the defence. But Whitfield just gets it and goes and he attacks. So if GWS continue to play that same game, and I don't see why they wouldn't seeing as it got them... I think, what, within a kick of the granny. Um, yeah, Whitfield, I think they're going to use again. So keep an eye on that one. Hawthorne, another good starting run here. Takes them up, uh, you know, about half, just under halfway through the season. God, the season keeps getting longer and longer, doesn't it? Bloody hell. So, yeah, again, Sicily and Amon will be the ones that it looks like they exit through. So that's really good for Sicily starters, uh, which is looking like myself. But uh, yeah, other factors going on with that one. Uh, Sydney here, they've got a quite a good uh, ending run of the season. So again, Blakey and Lloyd, but don't pay too much attention to them. So I wanted to point this one out. West Coast have got a horrid start to the year. So for any of those few out there that I've seen that think Witherden is going to do well, or even uh, Jermaine Jones or Liam Duggan, I would think again because look at that. For the first six rounds, they're probably going to lose money. Um, that's if they can get on the park anyway with all those injured West Coast players. But yeah, Witherden, he's not he's not a player that gets his own ball at all. And I think that's the knock on him. He has no defensive qualities. Um, I'm, I'm not here to bag AFL players. Obviously, they're far, far better than I ever could be. But... Yeah, he doesn't really have the standard defensive qualities that you see in an AFL player, and he just relies on being fed the ball. Now, that's not going to happen against these teams. Like, we know uh, Sydney, the power in GWS. The power are renowned for it. Like, they're really hard to score against as loose defenders. Um, and because they did well last year, I don't think they're going to change that up too much. So, yeah, I wouldn't be picking Witherden, Duggan, or Jones to begin, at least to begin with. Um, and yeah, I know they're not hugely popular picks, but I am definitely seeing their names thrown around here and there, especially in Facebook groups. Um, but yeah, they do have a nice run home. So maybe if one of them drops down in price, gets to the buy and you think they, you know, you need a pot or something to try and, um, ride home. One of them could be the go with that run home. So yeah, keep an eye on them then. But again, it's it's just too hard to predict at that point. It's too far away. A lot of uh, a lot of people, I think, as well, they forget that like this point in the season, we make a lot of predictions and everything looks clear. Even these graphs, like there's nothing clear about them. You know, like things change in AFL so quickly. Um, 
every year players pop up out of nowhere and think injuries happen and primos completely drop off so anything's possible that's why i don't think that any any idea necessarily is a bad one if you've got solid logic to it um so i'm never gonna knock people for for their unique ideas and stuff as long as they've got pretty decent um you know reasoning behind it so yeah that that's the last of these graphs um as i said i'm kind of glad because they're a bastard to make but um yeah the next video will i'm gonna say it'll be my uh i don't want to say team reveal i feel like it's yeah sounds a bit big-headed for someone with as little audience as me but um yeah probably i'll call it my first draft and you can see my first draft so and then i got a yeah a couple of ideas after that so i hope you keep watching and i hope you enjoyed this and got something out of it um yeah let me know in the comments if i've missed anyone or you can see a run that i've missed but yeah hopefully see you in the next one thanks for watching